Can I make roading chip with an impact crusher? My name's Bert Hart from Equip2 and today we're going to talk about producing roading chips and how to produce them. So the traditional way of meeting these specifications which means five broken faces on the stone and the grading so making sure we hit our grading sizes. Traditionally you run it through a jaw which is our primary then through a cone crusher which is our secondary crusher and then through likes of a barmac or a VSI which is our tertiary and gives us the shape index that's required for that chip. Now in this scenario we've achieved it with one machine and as long as your material is sized to the 200 to 250 size, no larger, um, then we're easily capable of producing it with one machine. If it's larger than that, it's just putting a pre-crush or a jaw in front of that. So the way we're able to achieve that with the keys tracks is number one is the speed of the rotor. So these can go sort of circa 42 meters per second. That's the tip of the bars. Whereas traditional is around about 33 meters per second. And that's what we saw on a target when we're doing um, like a road base or a gap 40 or 65. So the speed can help a lot in the shape index and throughput. And it also, because of the way the key track rotor is shaped, you can see it's more of a square rotor. And we've got all this area in front of the bar where the material can work. So we've seen it and proven it that this makes a big, big difference to the shape and text of the material, regardless of what spec you're actually trying to chase. So we've got a primary apron, and that's where your primary action's done. A lot of the primary of the crushing is done in this area, so more area up in here, the better. And then we've got our secondary apron as well. So most of the time, we're actually able to achieve that broken face and the shape index with these two breaker aprons. Now, if you're still struggling with that, we've got one operation in a, in a river shingle application, and that's got a third milling beam. So that's just giving us another chance to create maybe a little bit more dust and increasing that shape index. So if we talk about cost per tonne, if we can get away with just one unit to produce that, yes, the wear is higher, but we're saving three diesel engines. And the great thing about the R3, if we're gonna use that, is after the crushing done is done, you've got a double deck screen on the end. So we've got off the mid fraction belt, we'll have our say seven to 20 mil fraction, and that'll be our chip size. And then off the fines belt off here will be our PAP seven or dust. So zero to seven. And the top is recirculated back to get another hit from the crusher. So I trust that helps and helps understand on how an impact crusher can actually produce the right shape index material for a rodent chip. Thank you.